Hello, hello, beautiful people. Today, we have something a little bit different and a little bit special. So as you guys all know, um, if you're listening on the podcast, the Harmony Inspired Health podcast, this has been running for many years now. And if you're in the Ayurveda and Women's Health Sisterhood Facebook group, you know that we live stream a lot of um, the episodes into the group. But I'm doing a little branch off from the podcast. So the, the normal episodes, Harmony Inspired Health episodes about women's health and Ayurveda, they're still going to be going on. But I'm also doing a little branch off um, and doing a little series called The Evolution of Your Higher Self. And this is a co-hosted series with the wonderful, wonderful Melissa Owls. And we're so excited to bring these conversations to you. It's often what we we chat on on some of our crazy adventures, which we'll get into later. But the very first episode, we wanted to talk to you guys about it's that it's never too late to change the trajectory of your life. And we want to bring our wisdom and our own personal life experiences into these episodes so that we can go on that sort of deeper personal level with, with all of you beautiful women out there listening and perhaps men listening, children. Um, so yeah, I would like to welcome you to our very, very first episode and co-host Mel, <laughs> how are you beautiful? Good. How are you? I'm really excited. Um, like you and I have been talking about doing this for a little while now um, and it's finally here. We're doing it. So I'm excited. I'm nervous, but I'm excited. Yay. And we've shared so many crazy experiences together already, which is why we thought, man, we should start like an episode series together, just sharing our crazy stories that we end up getting ourselves into. But we thought, but we have, we have that sort of crazy fun side, but we also have that really deep connected side that we love to go into our deep and meaningful chats as well. So we thought, you know what, when we're together, we should just be hitting record and we would know. the best episodes. <laughs> so now we're doing it. Um, so j just briefly introduce yourself, Mel. Yes. So, hey, everyone. I'm Mel. Um, I am a holistic inform a trauma-informed coach and healer. Um, but first and foremost, I'm a mama to three crazy, beautiful, crazy, crazy children. Um, and yeah, so I, I, and I just want to explain when I first met Harmony, we were in a business networking meeting and I remember sitting there and she was just like, you know, when you meet people and they just like glow, they just vibe, they're bright. So I kind of, I didn't even know your name yet. And I looked and we went around and you introduced yourself and you're like, I'm Harmony and I've never, and that's Nala. <laughs> and I've never met um, a Harmony before because my daughter's name was Harmony. And I'm like, oh my God, I just, I just need to know this person. I need her in my life. I need her to be my friend. Um, yeah. And these are my two fur babies. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I felt exactly the same. It's funny, you know, people that you meet, you just have that instant connection, like that real soul connection with that maybe you've even been connected in past lives before, but there's just that deep knowing and understanding of each other. You don't have to try hard. Like mm -hmm. it's just feels like an old friendship, even though it it's a relatively new friendship. Well, not yeah. really anymore. Hey, it's been like years oh, now. That was many years. years. Three years? It was before no, COVID. COVID. <laughs> it was well before COVID. Yeah, it's been about four years. God, the last few years have gone so quick, hey? Um, like it never happened. Yeah, I know, right? But yeah, we definitely, we met through um, a business um, group and from there we have come to collaborate and work together. Um, Mel's even the student success mentor in my Ayurveda Alchemist program and we have had lots of fun, fun adventures. So and for those who um, don't know me, my name is Harmony and I am an Ayurveda and women's health practitioner. I'm also the founder of the Ayurveda Alchemist Academy where you can learn all about Ayurveda and women's health and become an Ayurveda holistic health coach. So basically with these um, episodes, the purpose is that we really want to inspire, educate and empower our listeners to embrace change and be able to transform their lives. And me and Mel, we, we have this deep connected, I guess, what would you say, like this deep connected sameness, these visions, but we come from different worlds and I bring a lot of the 
the uh, I guess you would say the the science and and the woo like I'm a yoga teacher and Ayurvedic practitioner but I've got a science background as well so I bring that through and Mel's brings her trauma-informed life coaching and intuitive powers all through so that we can really take a holistic look when we're when we're having these conversations and we are both also going to be turning 40 early next year <laughs> 84 babies I'm really excited when it when I when people are like oh my god you you're going to be 40 how does it feel I'm actually really excited because like it just I had when you turn 40 you're like I've got more wisdom I'm older and it's amazing and it's such a privilege because there's so many people out there that don't even get to reach this age so I'm really excited to turn 40 and get out of my 30s See, I love that outlook, whereas I'm the opposite. I'm like, bloody hell, I don't want to be like 40. I don't know, like 30, 30 sounds so cool. It sounds still young and vibrant. Yeah. You've still got so much going on, but still mature and, you know, and I'm like 40. I'm running away to Bali to celebrate. So I don't have to be like, ooh, I'm 40. So when I said to, when we were talking about the, the podcast series and episodes, you know, how we were talking about, you know, we can do it like wiser in your 40s. We're coming into this wisdom age and all of this. And Mel's like, I'm so excited about being 40. I'm like, I am so not. <laughs> so we definitely have our differences but we um make a beautiful blend of both of those yeah so I think um we want to start this episode off by talking about and understanding the potential for change and the concept of change and why it's never too late to embark on on a new path because as women who are almost mid-age <laughs> we have ourselves embarked on a new path I would say over the last few few years or a bit longer we've really been transitioning and I find that even with my clients my women's health clients even if they're coming to see me for hormonal health or gut health a big part of you know when I take that holistic look is that connection to purpose and their dharma and and that transition in life coming into their perimenopause stage or even the the ones a little bit older going through menopause there's this huge transformation and often there's a fear that comes with that change but if we really embrace it and if we we make that change positive and we make that change you know honoring the path that we want to be on instead of maybe like you know, in your 20s and your 30s, you're just doing what you think you need to be doing, right? But yeah. we really come into this age where we can be like, screw that. Like, that's not what I want to be doing anymore. You know, I I feel like, you know, as Mel said, you're so grateful. Some people don't even make it to 40. You know, we're here. And if we look at how much more of our life we have to experience, like I want to experience it in the the most uplifting, best way possible. And that's really by connecting to my purpose, my dharma, and by navigating change. And change can be tough. So I know Mel, you've gone through quite a lot of changes in the last last few years. Um, so can you share with us a little bit about your yeah, your story, because you have quite a background story all the way from childhood to your evolved to corporate to going back into corporate recently. Like, yeah, you've got, you've had so many changes. So I'd love to just briefly touch on that and how you navigate those changes. Yeah, definitely. And just before I go in that, just touching base exactly what you said, like, you know, in your 20s, you think that you kind of have it all figured out. And I think with society norm and pressures, it's like you come out of school and you've got to go straight into a job. So, you know, you're already conditioned in, I need to know, you know, my purpose. And your 20s, who even knew? Like, I didn't even know myself at 20 years old. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, and when you talk about dharma and pur purpose, it's really um, to go on a self-discovery journey to discover who you are and what lights your soul up to then go okay this is my purpose and this is my dharma and this is what this is what lights me up this is how I'm going to live my life in our 20s we don't know we're so conditioned into find a career that you want study get a job and off you go and and you know and it, that's why it doesn't come until your mid-30s where you you know you kind of especially us women when you start having children going who like that happened for me after my third child I looked at myself in the mirror and that was probably my pivotal moment with the big change going 
looked at myself in the mirror and stared at my eyes and going, who the fuck is this person? I don't even recognize that person anymore. You know, and it's not until women get to those times where it's like, how have I been living? You start questioning why, how I've been living my life. I've wasted all this time and now I'm just a washed up stay at home mum. You know, so it was that pivotal moment when I had the third child and it was like, okay, I've got to start thinking about going back into work, working in corporate. And I didn't want to do that. Just the thought of that drained me and recently I and I stepped away from from corporate and followed my passion and followed my dreams and it wasn't until I've recently gone back into corporate for a period of time there that I realized there are so many women out there that are so disconnected from the truth of who they are from their passion what lights them up that they and there's one particular lady that I can um that I'm that I see is you start to see that manifest in her body like her body is so inflamed and she's got all these diseases because she's so disconnected from what brings her joy what lights her up her dharma her purpose they're not living in alignment because they are too scared and that that trauma part comes in they're too afraid to step out and follow their dreams because it's like I'm not good enough I'm not worthy enough I'm not going to be loved this is you know the expectations and family of following your dreams and um you know, and I know my family thinks I'm crazy. I I <laughs> took out, sold my property, had all the money that I've saved years in my 20 to save up and get property and make that money and threw it into a co-working space, you know, going so excited and go, I'm not doing corporate. I'm just going to throw it in here and open this beautiful supporting space. Um and then lost it all. And what, you know, due to COVID. And that's why I had to go back into corporate because you know you've got put the food on the table and stuff like that. But I realized that was sucking my soul. <laughs> it was, so I just went, I'm all in again, you know, risk it all because I'm so connected with my purpose, so connected with my dharma that I need to follow and help women just like you, Harmony, right? Like you worked in the medical field and went, okay, even though you love it and all that kind of stuff, but then you sw- went all in into following your passion and your dharma. Mm. Uh, that's just going back onto your story, Mel. That's what I love about you, though. Like, with you know, you trusted in this beautiful vision and of um, elevate the co working space that you created. It was stunning, it was so beautiful. It just was the not the right time because it was right, you know, in the thick of COVID when everything was getting shut down and all of that. But even through that experience where you did, you you lost a lot of time, you lost a lot of energy. I mean, it would have zapped, most people it would have scared them to never, ever try anything like that again. And you did, you lost a lot of money. Like there was so much loss and so much grief for this vision that you had, but you, you keep coming back and you keep you know, following your your passion and allowing life to change and just to go with it without, you know, really. I mean, I'm sure you. I'm sure you've got the fear, but I do. Show up. I, I really have the fear, and going on that, it it any other first, it takes a lot of um a lot of self. I don't think it's self-confidence. It's a lot of trust and surrender to follow your purpose to start up a business, any business and and the challenges you face. But when you go through businesses and you would know harmony that sometimes businesses don't go the way that you want and they quote unquote fail, it's not really a fail because you learn the lessons. But when you're in the thick of it and you have a, a failure, so to speak, you look at it like as a failure and a loss and and then those those limiting stories start creeping in. See, you're not worthy. You're not worthy of success. You can't do it. It's for other people, not you. Just go back and get a job. Just go make the money. Go back and do the norm. And yes, I went through those things and and like, you know, how many, and then a lot of the stuff I had a lot of, um, um, uh, what do you call it, medical issues arise because of that. I was in that depression, deep rest state, but uh, that fire that burnt in my stomach went, oh my God, it's not about me. It is not about me. It's about the women out there that need the help. Who the hell am I to sit here and go, poor me, I lost all my money, I have no money left and I've got kids and all this shit, it's not about me and I think that's what keeps driving me. 
I'm scared as fuck. It's scary to put yourself out there. It's, you know, you have those doubts, but, you know, when you have an amazing supporting network and women that are driven and and the love around you and you remember why you're doing it and you've got that drive in your belly and you're so connected, you just keep getting up. You just keep getting up and you keep going, even though you don't know, you have that surrender and that trust to your dharma, to your purpose, to your calling, and you just do it, you know, Mm -hmm. and you just grow along your journey. It's not a failure. It's growing. Like, what can I learn from this? And when you go in that depression, and I like to call it that deep rest state, you learn so much because it's at your rock bottom that you have to rise like the phoenix. You have to rise and you're only going to rise stronger. So, um, Absolutely. And I think when we, we talk about big changes in our lifespan, mm. not just doesn't need to just relate to business or career changes. Obviously, we go through many transitions in our life um, as women, and that could be the birth of a child, that could be a new relationship, that could be loss of a loved one, a parent. Mm. Every time we go through these big events in our life, it is a big change to Um, us as a person because we grow we evolve through those experiences it's a big change maybe into our daily routine it's a big change into the way we perceive things and any any sort of change you know there there can be a lot of fear behind it we saw that in the COVID era where there was just so much fear because the world was changing in front of our eyes and we didn't, we couldn't control it because we didn't know what change, we couldn't foresee that change happening. Um, And it was sort of took us all back a bit because we're like, you know, we only really have the, the power within us to either mold and go with the change and, and accept what we can and be part of it, or we can fight and resist, but, change is inevitable it's going to happen anyway so it's the way that you approach that and so that could even be if you're like stuck in you know a relationship that you're not truly happy with and you know that something needs to change in order for that relationship to be better maybe you have to learn to put some more boundaries in place maybe the relationship needs to be changed maybe you need to tap out like you know that's the reality sometimes maybe you need to fight harder for it whatever it is it's like those those things can be scary because even if the trauma of being in a shitty relationship or being in a shitty job is is hard and uncomfortable and you know drains you at least you know it at least you know how you're feeling how you know you you know what to expect if you've got a crap job you rock up you've got a shitty boss you know that that you know you're going to work and how how you're going to feel and if you're in a relationship that's not optimal you're just comfortable in that even though it's bad whereas when we look at you know making changes it is really really difficult and we have to ask ourselves some really tough questions but more so we actually have to implement some really tough actions Mm -hmm. because nothing changes if nothing changes yet change is always inevitable so (laughs) it's like it's it's a hard one but um yeah I do really um value Mel all your experiences you've been through and I know we've discussed so the into depth over the last few years because you just keep coming back stronger and stronger and you haven't let any of that define you or knock you down and you're just shining your light right now in in your in your own way and in your own business doing your thing so I guess I'd love to explore more the power of the mindset shifts Mm -hmm. and belief systems in creating that change yeah would you say it was like the biggest mindset shift that you had to had to overcome to be able to go you know what I'm actually I got out of corporate for a reason I have lost everything (laughs) but I am getting back out of corporate and following my my path because I know it's true to me like what were the mindset shifts that went on and that you had to change and how I think um what assisted my mindset shift was the feeling the, the feeling really drove it because no matter what bullshit stories I was telling my mind the feeling doesn't lie right and I'm like okay why am I still feeling this feeling if I'm telling myself 
to stay in corporate, I'm not good enough, it's not going to happen for me, then why am I feeling that passion, right? And I, and one thing that just really that I truly believe um, and time and time again to pull me out when I get in this victim state is it just like the Ayurveda, right? The Ayurveda, they say it's not what we, we are not what we eat, we are what we digest, right? So when I look at trauma and this saying that I always tell myself is we are not what happened to us. We are who we choose. We are who we choose to become or what we choose to believe. Love that. Right. And that for me um, has been a constant um, saying that I tell myself over and over through so many different challenges in my life. It's like, I am not what happened to me. I am who I choose to become, who I'm choosing to believe. And when I say that, that's when that it connects into that passion, that fire, that feeling inside that makes me make those scary choices, right? Because whenever we go through um, changes in life or when we have the courage to even think about making a change in our life, it's so scary. All our trauma, all our limiting beliefs come up right? Like all that shit comes up. What are people going to think about us? Or this isn't the norm or I'm not good enough, but we really need to, like I said before, we really need to have a lot of support around us. We need to bring self-awareness. I think you spoke about harmony before. We need to have self-compassion there and we need to have a direction, you know, and I know at the right now there's a whole like the feminine energy and go with the flow and you need that but you also need the masculine energy right we need to have a plan in place you need to connect with the feminine flow of okay what is it that my heart is calling what is this desire go on this self-exploration journey get to know yourself self-awareness okay what is this what do I have in the world that I can shine what is it that if it's leaving, if it's leaving a partner, what is it that I want in a relationship? What is it that I want in a career? What is it that I want in a business? What is it that I want in my friendships? Mm-hmm. Inquire about it, then make the make a plan. Go get a notepad and paper, write that out, write that out, and then take the small actionable steps into fulfilling it so for me it's like I don't want to be where I am now what do I got to do okay I know that I've got to get some money but I know I want to be in business and then start taking those steps start going out and I know I've got support network I'm like Harmony this is what I'm doing I'm I don't want to be here she's like get the fuck out this is what you need to do but you need income you know talk this out so it's not just in your head um, so I think if you have compassion, if you have an action plan, if you get some self-inquiry and realisation, that's really going to help support you um, on, on your path. And I think using from an Ayurveda perspective, it's, you know, um, that dinacharya, your, your routine, that is really, really going to support, help you regulate your nervous system, grounding you know, wake up in the morning, do your breath work, go get some grounding, do movement, eat nutrition foods that are going to support you. All that is going to support the mental state. So it's not just mind, it's the whole holistic, what we're talking about, Harmony. It's the whole holistic approach, the mind, body and spirit. Mm, Absolutely. And I also think if you're on that verge of changing the trajectory of your own life, because you know that you need to implement some sort of change, I think it's really important to honour who we are right now and who we, you know, quote unquote were because the the person that we were, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that that person, that woman, that man, whoever's listening right now um, because that person is your biggest cheerleader and that person is the one that's going to propel you forward to these changes because I know even for myself, as you mentioned, like a lot of those limiting beliefs come up, like, am I worthy of success? Am I worthy of change? Am I worthy of a good relationship? Am I worthy of love? Am I worthy of a a new life? All of those things come, especially if you've been conditioned or been in a situation or grew up a certain way, because you have through that process and through those years attached that identity to who you are. But 
that is never who you are. We go through stages in our life and every stage we grow, we can evolve, we can change. And we're not always looking for that one dharma, that one purpose, because that purpose will change through the stages of our life. Mm. And it's to get us really to evolve, to evolve to our higher self. That is what life is all about. And that is the purpose of life. And that is our higher purpose. It's to, to move through this, I don't know, a better word than ladder, but like move through this sort of realm or ladder of evolution, basically, mm. to get to our higher self where we can feel more deeply connected and content that is like the the greater purpose of all and so even for myself it took me a long long time to accept what I actually wanted and to be really honest with that because I grew up um, I grew up with amazing wonderful parents who were very supportive but we didn't have a lot. I We lived in a house on top of a hill that had, I didn't even have like a proper toilet. It was like a camping toilet. So no flushing water, no toilet like that. And I would never have friends over because it was so embarrassing. Like it was that embarrassing. I didn't have walls inside my house. I had to, to make bedrooms between me and my brother and my parents. We had to like stack up cupboards. So we really had nothing and we were, we were, I guess, you know, always told you've got to, you've got to work hard to achieve and um, keep grounded, keep rooted, like people with money were evil, like that kind of, not, you know, they never said that, but, you know, those kind of beliefs were the ones that I created um, growing up. But I'm quite different. Like I like, I like to be soulful and grounded and I'm so grateful for that really earthy sort of upbringing. But at the same time, I also love nice things. I love <laughs> luxury resorts, like all of those type of things as well. And I had this vision, you know, I'm going to move out as, you know, as soon as I can, I'm going to move to the Gold Coast. I'm going to create all of this. But one thing mum did say to me is she did say to me that you can be anything you want to be. Like, it doesn't matter where you've come from, what you have, you can always be anything you want to be. And my dad, he was, he was like, you know, very much about working hard, although he was like, a, he was a very hard worker. But if you saw him, you'd be like, he's such like a earthy hippie guy, <laughs> but he's, he's about working hard and earning money and being like really logical. And he was like, oh, you know, it's going to be really hard to move to the, the Gold Coast. It's going to be expensive. You won't be able to do it like at your age because I was, I finished school when I was 17. So I moved out when I was 17 up for uni. And I think the combination of both of those things, mum saying I can be anything and dad saying it's going to be hard, sort of put this sort of fire in me. I'm mm -hmm. one that at one stage like, I'll show you dad, I'll freaking make it. <laughs> And at the other time, um, you know, with mums, what she said, I was like, yeah, I can do anything. And I think when I did start to do my thing and we started to um, grow more financial abundance, I really struggled with that. I didn't feel mm. like it was me. I didn't work. I wasn't worthy of it. I would shy away from it. I would hide, um, mm. you know, hide things that I had or, yeah, it was, it was really, really hard. And then I battled for a long time. Like, who am I? Am I this earthy spiritual person or am I someone who likes, you know, nice things? And it's like, I'm both of those and I can embrace both of those because when I am, when I'm bringing both of those parts of me together, that's me holistically and that is me in my higher self, you know. I'm very grounded in my spirituality. I'm very... Uh, logical and very grounded but I'm also very connected to other realms and and know that there's more than this material world out there and that science isn't the answer for everything because we always defy odds right so I think um I've really gone on a tangent where did I even start this wow yeah, I I love that because it just goes to show right like it goes to show that from your humble beginnings and growing up and having those belief system put in that money is evil and if your success comes money and that's evil but then you're at that point where you started getting the success you started following your heart and your dharma but then the 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 you know the limiting stories of your belief coming in going no 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 
you're you can't be you can't be successful because money's evil i'm evil i can't have the nice things because that's evil i need to be earthy i need to be grounded so you're at that crossroads so when you were at that crossroads what was it do you think was there a pivotal moment or do you think it was accumulation of things that allowed you to break through that to be able to make that change into the evolution of your higher self yeah i think it was actually going into deep meditation Mm. and asking myself those questions like who am I and why do I feel some days I just want to be barefoot on the beach like I hardly ever wear makeup anyway but like you know just really diving into the ocean living on a little island (laughs) like real earth mama soul mama just picturing myself around beautiful waterfalls and connected to nature which I absolutely love that brings me so much joy but then how come sometimes you know I you know I'm like oh I love that Louis Vuitton handbag and I want to go stay at the Versace and I was like I felt like is that because I'm like being pulled away from my roots and you know I've got to pull my head in and become more grounded again and what is the Gold Coast world taking me up with it and all of those thoughts I'm like no because I actually freaking enjoy going and staying at the Versace you know like I'm not there to be seen I'm there because I enjoy it and I also enjoy going and to Nusa Lamboggan in Bali and being on an island barefoot. Like these are both parts of me. And it wasn't till I really did this process um, through Ayurvedic psychology with I do that I do with a lot of my clients is using Ayurvedic psychology to get to those limiting beliefs and what they're all about and hiding who I who I really was because I'm in two worlds. I'm in that Western medical world and I'm in the the natural health spiritual world. And it was hard to really let myself be seen by both because I was afraid of what the backlash of both worlds may be, right? And when I thought, no, when you can step into your authentic self and real, you've come, everyone's come here with a meaningful, meaningful mission in life. And I honestly believe mine is about having a really grounded reality of both of those worlds and bridging the gap between modern medicine and science and spirituality and natural health and being able to deliver that message. But if I'm hiding from the world, I'm not really showing who I am and I'm not showing up as my higher self, it's going to be really hard to honestly and authentically deliver that message and step into my higher self because I'm hiding who I am. I'm hiding all parts of me, you know? So I think I really, um, had to do a lot of contemplating because I was struggling with that. And I was very aware I was struggling with that. And I did a lot of meditation, a lot of breath work and journaling. And, you know, I don't want to make it sound like I do that all the day, every day, because I don't journal every day. Like it's, it's not what I did, but I knew that I had this, this limiting belief that was keeping me stuck with where I was in my life, in my happiness, in my health, in my business. And I had to work out why, and this is what, manifest from that for me in that moment and that's beautiful and I love it and it takes exactly back to what you're saying earlier about you know as we're going through life we're constantly evolving we're evolving into that higher connected more self and to get to that stage you have to let go of um the the identities that you thought you were to come into your true self and accept it right? And that's how you evolve because we are multifaceted beings. There's so many different sides to us. So for example, in my house, I was just having this conversation with a friend the other day, in my house, in every different room, it's a different style and a different color because like, God, there is so many different sides to me. One side of Mel very loves structure and classic and beautiful. And the other side of Mel, like this one here, I love plants and feathers and the woo-woo spiritual side. And then in my room, it's very kind of boho and nice. And, you know, so there is so many different facets of us. And it's let's fucking make it normal that we embraced every single side of us. If Harmony wants to go walk down fucking beach with the Louis Vuitton and her sarong with no shoes, then that's who she is. That's okay. And we're owning that shit. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, to be 
connected to your higher self and evolve into your higher self. Let's let go of those fucking bullshit identities. Let's embrace so many different facets of us, even if it's polarizing, who gives a shit because that is who we truly are. Allow those sides to come out and play. And it's like when we were children, we love to play dress ups and embody different versions of ourselves and allow that to play. So why do we need to stop as adults? Mm. It. like that we're big sense. ass children and that is the issue because we're not connected in the joy of life and who we are so how many put your lv bloody tote on it's your sarong and i'll come with you onto the beach and walk barefoot yes we will it's so true and i think that's the other scary thing about change as well is because we've attached ourselves so strongly to these identities that we held and often for women I see this in my clinic with women who are transitioning from perimenopause through to menopause that's a huge transition in itself and like from Ayurvedic perspective and those cultures that really see this transition as a beautiful transition you're going into your wise womanhood you're you're looked up to as this sort of sacred wise women and this being but in our modern culture it's like oh shit I'm aging I'm getting more wrinkles I'm getting even grayer I don't have my menstrual cycle cycle anymore it makes me less womanly and more of an old person but it's not true like it's just a different transition and we've identified to ourselves being like this youthful woman who has hormones in the cycle but also within that period we often really identify ourselves either with being a mother for some people and they find it really hard when their children grow up and start to move out of home when their children are in their 20s or we identify ourselves with our career and our accolades and I know for myself I knew there was this like deeper calling and yearning for me to really you know bridge the gap but move out of more of the western medicine and move into what I knew was so wholeheartedly true for me and my passion which is Ayurveda and and sharing that with the world and I'm currently studying a master's in acupuncture as well traditional Chinese medicine because I believe so much in these eastern medicine um, philosophies but I had such a strong identity as a nurse. I'd been a nurse for, and I'm, I'm still a nurse. And see, I even had to say that I'm still a registered nurse. I'm still, you know, just because I've still got that ingrained identity. I left school at 17, went straight to uni, did my nursing degree. I was a graduated nurse by 20, 21. And I had been since my 20, 20 year old, self being a nurse worked in the emergency department the theaters all of those things and my identity was so caught up in that that when I had to or didn't have to I wanted to I mean I should say wanted to step into my business full time and leave my nursing career and just do casual nursing it was hard because I'm like what do I call myself like I've always said you know on every document what are you a registered nurse like it people don't understand what an Ayurvedic practitioner is or a natural health practitioner or an Ayurveda educator or women's like it was that part of my me my identity and it was a real struggle to not lose it I wouldn't say lose it but transition and accept it for myself because everyone else accepts it they're like good on you they're they're cheering you on they're not caring what you're doing but you do and I actually did find that I, my grandma was the closest soul to me in the whole wide world. I love her so, so much. And she, when she passed away, it was like the the biggest heartbreak I've ever experienced in my life. But also when she passed away, I also felt that I could make the transition because, you know, grandparents, that, that era, that age, they're always proud to have a granddaughter or grandson, whatever, as a nurse or a doc, like a medical sort of person, because they're now needing so much. <laughs> <laughs> My grandmother was the same. <laughs> yeah. So I, I did, I was like, you know, once she sort of moved on, I also felt that I could move on from having to uphold that identity for them mm-hmm. to be proud of. But at the same time, once I did that, I was like, you know what? that's so silly because she would have loved to see me move on and step into my higher self because I was always tired and grumpy and over it as a nurse and I didn't like it and she would have much preferred to see me now and I I really kick myself for for not doing that transition sooner and 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 showing completely who I am and and being not afraid to do that and I again I think that also happens as you do get a little bit older now that we're getting to our 40s Mel (laughs) 
oh yeah <laughs> we're stepping into that so yeah, yeah. yes well I think, I think it's beautiful I think we when we just spoke about on Friday I think the biggest thing with um hopefully helping you guys understand is when you're stepping away and you feel that okay you're stepping into you know that next level of your higher self and you're still having that attachment and holding on of who you were and maybe some identity identity surrounding that is go into a beautiful practice go into a beautiful practice and sit there and connect with the person or the identity that you're about to step away from and thank her for all the lessons thank her for any shortcomings thank her for you know the strength that she's gotten you to this far just bring some awareness and sit with that energy whether you're going to a meditation where you're going to embodiment practice just sit with that energy and really thank her and go through a little ceremony of letting her go allowing her to give her wisdom and passing on the baton for you to run into mm -hmm. your next higher self so anyone that's kind of struggling with that just go into a beautiful ritual and um, however that looks for you but have that conversation and allow that to go because if you're holding on and you're resisting that's where the grief is going to come in a negative way because you're always going to grieve but we can do it in a, such a beautiful way of okay she served me thank you here's the baton was your wisdom and I'm going to go with that so you're still bringing her bringing the wisdom along with you you're just shedding and letting go of the identity in order for you to rise into that into the truth of who you are so just peeling that layer off but keeping your essence mm, I love that so much and I think that's even for the women in here who do have their own business or embarking on their own sort of business journey it's true for like our our business there's so many already like there's so many um, different, what's the word? Uh, like <laughs> it changes. There's yeah, so it many, constantly changes. There's so yeah, many different editions of, yeah. of, of our business and it could be completely different from where you started. I mean, I did start in a medical business, medical injecting business, and I did um, transition into an active wear business. I've had many, many businesses in the past and all of them have really helped to get me to the point I am in the business that I currently have. And so we could look at it as even for you, like with um, Elevate, the co-working space we were speaking about earlier, like that might have been an expensive lesson, but it was still something, a, still a lesson and you would have learned and you would have made so many connections through that. It's like the active wear that I don't have anymore got rid of that through um, COVID, but I had that for many years. I learned so much from it, I, but I also learned that I was, again, hiding behind an active wear brand as opposed to showing up as my true self because it was harmony inspired active wear, right? It was all about, so I could come and I could do this, but hide behind a brand, not myself, because that was scary. Um, but at the same time, I just wasn't passionate about leggings or sports bras like <laughs> I love fashion like I said I love fashion yeah. I love pretty prints and all that but at the end of the day that that wasn't making a, a, enough of a difference for me like I knew I had more in me to create greater impact and it wasn't through selling leggings and and dishing out a few inspirational quotes there was so much more I needed to to share and I had that business whilst I was doing this as well mm -hmm. um, but that business really really connected me in in so many different ways and taught me so much so yeah all of your all of your changes all of your pivots in life all of your transitions they're all part of you they're nothing to to be ashamed of they're nothing to wish wish away they're just parts of you your evolution your evolution to your higher self so yeah and yeah. I just wanted to say this one thing before I forget that came up is if you have still got a heartbeat and your heart is still beating, then go for it. Don't be afraid to make the change. Just go for it because you don't want to get to the end of your life and go, what if, what if I had just done that, right? That isn't there now. We are in the present moment and the present moment, we can choose what we want to create. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you. That was a fun conversation. You know, when we oh, start, we can't stop talking. Usually I'm like the one just asking all the questions <laughs> on the podcast and I'm like, oh, 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 oh. 
we get this is, this is great because these are our conversations so for you guys this is an insight to me and harmony's conversations and we'll probably have to share in the next episode or so some of our um adventures with snakes and clowns and those kind of things so yeah. well, <laughs> this is can. what happens we have a good time we have a laugh and we go on adventure so this is a little insight to behind the scenes of me and harmony chatting away yeah we definitely um yeah we definitely have these beautiful dnm combos but we've yeah had some crazy adventures i think the clown one tips it off like should we just share the clown one right <laughs> share the clown one you <laughs> it's, freaking it's great we can laugh about it now though yeah we can laugh about it now but at the time it was so freaking scary mm. um we were at the gold coast girls in business awards night because i was nominated for three awards there and it was a beautiful night and we had so much fun I got a hotel room where they were holding it. So Mel was walking me back to the hotel room and it was also around Halloween, but it was Halloween. <laughs> we were, we were unaware that there was any other event going on. And there was this scary as fuck clown mm-hmm. as we exited the building. Like it was the it clown, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. And the it, it, he like the face pain and everything looked like a legit clown coming out from a horror movie it was oh. so real and the way he just stared and, and, was, it, was and it took us back like we weren't yeah. expecting that so we sort of walked or like off to the side and I was like oh my god that's scary and we like just quickly shuffle past him and there was this huge like staircase that we had to get up to get to the the glass door at the top of it to then enter the building where the hotel room that was was. all dark in the middle of the night yeah it was oh yeah and like you know we're nanas we're usually in bed by nine o'clock so this is a late night for us so we're walking up this we go to walk up this staircase then all of a sudden this freaky clown just piss bolts after us chases us and then we just look we screamed and then we're running up the stairs to get to the door to the, the glass door and then I'm getting the you know one of those swipe keys out and I'm trying to like get in the glass door but you know adrenaline I was like shaking and then Mel just turns around and I just hear this blood curdling scream like you've never heard before that and had the- that had really re-traumatized um because I had never felt that fear that I had felt from when I was sexually molested where I was backed in a corner with a man that I had no control that you know and it just really and I didn't realize that you know you do all the work and I'm fine with it but it just kind of your body knows and when your body's in survival mode and it gets scared it has stores all the memory it just came up so I screamed like I was getting murdered it was just oh it it was was so so bad and then when I so I heard the scream so I turn around I think I'm gonna have to kick this guy down with my high heels and oh my god thank god you know somebody I don't know I see you boxing and all that kind of stuff but I'm like all right I'm in safe hands this chick is gonna bash up this clown for me I'm good and then he turns out and then he just goes do you want a balloon and that was even more scarier and then we finally finally got in the building and then we went to report that there's a freak down the stairs and then we see they're all dressed up as freaks yeah. and I mean that even got worse because then yeah. the little the chick behind there was like I don't know what she said oh she was so rude like she yeah, was, was saying, really, I just remember that very you were so shaken up and say yeah, look I've really been abused up. and this has triggered everything I'm so like and I was so shaken up because it was so freaking scary and then she goes well, would have you been? Would have it been an issue if it was a, a woman chasing That's you? Right. Yeah. You didn't know what it was. Was it a clown suit? You dickhead. Yes. Oh, this was swearing on this podcast. Um, but yeah, it was. Anyway, it was like a full on night. So we went from like a real high, this yeah, beautiful, amazing beautiful night. Event. It was so good, and to this like utter fear and terror and like that just goes to show how things can change in a split moment right and it was so bad at the time but now we laugh about it and since then we've had many more of those kind of experiences I don't know why but we go from having these like crazy experiences to then like connecting on this soul deep level and but we always come back to soul don't we it's all part of us so yeah thank you so much for yeah thank you so much everyone for joining me and Mel um 
we love having you here. It's like grab your cup of chai and sit there and have a chat with us. We yeah have a lot of gratitude for you turning up and joining in the conversation, even if you didn't get to do much talking or listening to us. <laughs> but yeah, we, we're really um, excited to bring this little series to you. So as I mentioned, it's a sort of branch off of the Harmony Inspired Health podcast. This one is called um, Evolution to Your Higher Self. This specific episode was about, um, you know, navigating that change in your life. And if you have any other topics that you would love us to share our wisdom on, please, please reach out to us. If you enjoyed the episode, please let us know. Please take a little screenshot and share it on your Instagram and tag at Harmony Inspired Ayurveda and at I am Melissa Owls on Instagram. And yes, we would just love to thank all of you for tuning in and having you here. And I would love to let you know that this episode and this little mini series is brought to you by the Ayurveda Alchemist program which is a fully accredited program that certifies you to become an Ayurveda and women's holistic health coach. I am one of the um, educators and facilitators and the beautiful Mel is our mindset mentor and student success 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 <laughs> success coach but we have such a wonderful time in that program really dive deep into Ayurveda Ayurvedic psychology the philosophy of everything um dharma the things we're talking about today how to evolve to your higher self but then how to help other people do that too by being a wonderful holistic health coach and not only is it brought to you by the Ayurveda Alchemist program but it is also brought to you by beautiful Melissa's Evolve program. So do you want to share a little bit more about that? Yeah. So uh, the Evolve and Self-Expansion program is really a high-end mentoring program there for high-functioning women um, that are you know, has that glass ceiling on them because of all the traumas and challenges. So this program is so dear to my heart because it follows my methodology, my three-step methodology that has enabled me to overcome all my trauma for me to evolve into my higher self and get that success, not only in business, in relationships, in health and wealth and all that kind of stuff. So this is really close to my heart because it brings all the ancient wisdom from Ayurveda, somatics, energetics and we really approach healing trauma from a holistic way from the mind body and soul so i um, really excited to have this self-expansion program and the evolve mm. and for those wondering the evolution of your higher self edition this little podcast series is actually a play on words it's a play on both of our methodology so mel has the um, evolve methodology and i have the higher self methodology which is the backbone to all of the work that we do in our own individual programs or with our clients. And we teach you how to create your own methodology in our Ayurveda Alchemist program as well. So please reach out if you have any questions or if you are interested in learning more about the Ayurveda Alchemist program or Mel's beautiful Evolve program. Thank you so much. Lots of love and namaste, Mel. Such a beautiful conversation as always. Thanks, Harmony. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>